request from a subscriber today, we're going to be looking at creating the illusion of distance. Okay, so ordinarily I just jump straight into the mixing, but this time I wanted to take a little bit of time to actually analyze the picture here and uh, uh, see what we're dealing with. Not least because this is such an easy scene to actually put together, I thought it'd be quite a useful exercise. So I'm gonna cover all of the colors that we need in this picture, not just the, uh, the various grays. So looking at it in the foreground, we have a near silhouette, a very, very dark uh, shade of green. Uh, a little bit further into the distance, we've got this uh, slightly, uh, greener, slightly lighter, slightly warmer colour. Uh, and then as we go off here into the far middle, di middle distance, uh, we have uh, green grey, which fades through to the sky colour really. And the sky is kind of a, just a white uh, graded down into uh, yellow ochre or something very similar. Um, so as we go into the distance, the sky colour merges with the land colour. We're kind of blending these two into each other. And that is really where we're going to start. Okay, let's start with the colours. So we've got some titanium white, permanent blue, burnt umber, uh, yellow ochre, some ivory black, a little bit of viridian, uh, and some uh, sap green. Now the grey is going to be three parts titanium white, two parts uh, permanent blue, and one part burnt umber. I'm going to mix those together. Okay, onto the sky colour. So I'm going to create a mixture here that is roughly the same as the sky colour at the horizon. This is going to be a modifier that we're going to use to uh, take those greys off into the distance. So just a little bit of the yellow ochre mixed in with the titanium white. Remember, always mix the darker colours into the lighter colours. That just ensures that you're not going to end up having to dilute it with more and more and more white and just waste loads of paint. Always start with the amount of white that you need and then tint uh, accordingly. Okay, so there's our sky uh, just at the horizon there. So the next colour is going to be our green. Now this isn't the four foreground green, this is the, uh, the green a little bit further off into the distance. I'm going to take some of the sap green, lovely transparent colour, and we're just going to mix a little bit of burnt umber into that, just to warm it up. It's still a lovely dark, but not quite as dark as the shade of the green that we're going to create for that foreground um, silhouette. Okay, now as I mentioned, we need to take this grey and make it a little bit green just so that it fits in with the overall scene. I'm going to use a little bit of the, uh, the uh, sap green and burnt umber mixture here. That's, uh, that's pretty close to that first colour. So what we're going to do from here on in is we're just going to mix a little bit of that with some of the sky modifier each time just a little smidge of that uh, adjusting as we go now because i'm working to a particular picture here i'm adjusting each one of these individually rather than just going with a graded scale and winging it so i'm going to spend a little bit more time modifying these Remember to use the, uh, the paint on the back of the palette knife as well. Mm. 
Now because these are all formed from the same base mix, they will sit quite harmoniously against each other in the picture. Just one more and then we're at the horizon, so this one can be quite a bit warmer. Just a little bit more of that uh, green and grey in there. Okay, looking good. So whilst we're at it, I am going to do some sky colours here. Um, and this is really very, very straightforward. I'm going to take some of the uh, sky colour um, and I'm going to mix some white into that. Um, each time I'm going to use the white that's left, sorry, the, the sky colour that's left on the palette knife um, as the start of the next swatch. And I'm basically just going to move from swatch to swatch just creating little puddles of paint that we can come back to uh, as we progress through the uh, through the sky. And you'll notice I'm not cleaning the palette knife each time, just using the paint that's on it as the starter for the next swatch. That'll do nicely. Again, because we've used the same modifier, it's all going to hang together very nicely. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of the green that we mixed earlier, the green and burnt umber, and make a shade of that by throwing some black into it. This is just ivory black, and that's the silhouette colour right at the front. Not quite as cool as it could have been, there's a little bit of burnt umber in there, just to warm it up, and the black makes it a lot, uh, a lot more opaque and less transparent. Uh, and then, of course, for that little patch of uh, uh, the slightly further into the distance um, the forest on the left-hand side, we've got the original green and uh, burnt umber mix. Okay, so one last thing to do, and that's to grey out these two darks. So we're just going to use the, uh, the base grey in both cases, again, so that everything hangs together. It all comes from the same mixtures. And... Uh, just create the impression of mist lying over. Even though these are very darks, they are still greys. So we just use the, uh, uh, the, the grey mix there to, uh, to create those misty effects. Now with the darks, you might need to tweak it a little bit. By all means, add a little bit more black in, as I'm about to here, um, or a bit more of that grey mix. What you shouldn't do at this point is use any of the, uh, the pure white. A little bit of the sky mix maybe, that wouldn't be a problem. But the pure white could unbalance it and give you uh, values that don't match. The effect of that is that the, uh, the foreground would stick out like a sore thumb. Close enough. So there you go, a bit of a challenge for you. Try painting that scene. Let me know how it goes down in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. As always, take it easy and I'll see you next time. Cheers.